I've been asked what my first big break in business was. The answer is easy. It was exactly 60 years ago when Caltrans, back then they were known as the Department of Transportation, decided to build a new freeway across the northern part of San Bernardino. I must admit I was only 10 years old at the time and had no idea that someday this would impact my life, especially since I lived in Mentone. The story starts in Hollywood in the early 60s. From what I remember, they were finishing a section of the Hollywood freeway that required a large number of nice homes to be moved or demolished. A house-moving contractor named Snodgrass bought one of the nicer homes and moved it to his lot in San Bernardino, where he had about a dozen other homes for sale. It was so big they had to cut it in half to move it to his lot, and it took two nights. The home video you are watching is actual home movie footage from the house being moved. Somehow my grandmother found out about it and decided she wanted it. Five years before that, my grandparents had bought a three-acre orange grove in Mentone with a two-story, ten-room house on it that was built in 1888, and the lot had enough street footage to split it into two parcels. Her idea was to buy the house move it to Mentone, fix it up, and sell it. And with the profit, pay off the original mortgage. My grandfather did most of the work every night, and I would help him. We both learned a lot about fixing up a move-on house. A lot of it the hard way. Long story short, everything went as planned, except it took a lot longer than we thought it would. Fast forward to 1970. My electrical business was just starting. In retrospect, being a semi-smart aleck, quasi-hippie with a ponytail did not help. Since I had plenty of spare time, I would spend it at my great Uncle Maury's real estate office in Dekaipa, doing odd jobs for some of his clients. I took my test and received my salesman license, but never made a sale. It turned out being a semi-smart aleck, quasi-hippie with a ponytail was not a good match for retired people buying real estate either but it made me privy to real estate listings. Unlike today, I'm not interested in the new listings. I was more interested in stale listings that had been on the market at least six months. One of those listings was for a vacant lot in Ukaipa on Bryant Street, and it had what was described a drainage ditch across the front and halfway down the other side of the street. It was part of an estate sale and they just wanted to get rid of it. I made an offer at less than half price. It was listed at $3,500. And to make it even sweeter, I only offered $100 down and a year to pay the balance. I gave them 30 days to think about it. Back to the Crosstown Freeway. As they were preparing for it, they flooded the market with used houses that had to be moved. At the state auctions, many of them went for the minimum bid of $100. They ended up having so much inventory, you could buy a house delivered to your lot for less than $2,000. I asked Nodgrass if they'd be willing to sell me a house with $100 down and one year to pay. But it was contingent on finding a lot. To my shock, the estate accepted my offer on the lot and so did the house movers. Unfortunately, the $200 in down payments pretty much cleaned me out. I was living in a rented house at the time in Ekaipa that needed a lot of town work, but the out-of-town owner, who I meant through Uncle Maury, rented it to me for $65 a month. It had a very steep pitch concrete tile roof with a huge attic, so one of the first things I did was convert the attic into a room. The only disadvantage was to get to the room you had to climb up a ladder on the outside of the house. I rented it to my best friend Kelly for $25 a month, including utilities and food. I hired Kelly to help me fix up the house in exchange for his rent and food. I traded electrical work with some of my construction friends. I even traded electrical work with a small restaurant called the Garibaldi Hut. It was on California Street in Ukaipa, and I traded the electric work for lunch every day. Things like concrete and concrete blocks, I worked out deals with Ukaipa Ready Mix and Hughes Concrete Blocks products where they would carry my bill with interest until I sold the house. I traded an old truck I had for roofing materials at Presco in San Bernardino. 
I had the thing completed in six months and it turned out looking pretty nice. I put it on the market. Since I was a listing agent, I only had to pay half the commission. When I listed it, I put the words Seasonal Creek because I thought it sounded much better than Drainage Ditch. I even built a small bridge over the Seasonal Creek to give it some accent. Once again, let's return to the Crosstown Freeway. As I mentioned, my real estate mentor was my grandfather's brother, Uncle Maury. My grandmother had a sister named Rose who lived on Ladera Street just below 30th. Caltrans also bought her house. She received $5,000 more from Caltrans and as asking for the Ukaipa house. So she bought it at full price with the condition I move her. The only problem was all I had was a VW bus and a 1948 Chevy pickup that belonged to my grandfather. And great aunt Rosie insisted I have a decent looking vehicle to move her with because she did not want the neighbors talking about her behind her back. There was a plumber in Loma Linda named George Randolph who was selling a fairly decent step van for $600. I asked him if he would sell it to me and I would pay him in about a month but there was one contingency. I would need to borrow it long enough to drive it over to Aunt Rosie's house for her approval. He looked confused but he agreed. Everything was falling into place. When I received my check from the escrow, I stared at it in disbelief. I never thought I would see a check that big with my name on it. I took it to my bank, which was Security First National Bank in Redlands. They put a two-day hold on it, but on the third day, I spent the whole day hand-delivering checks to every single person who had helped me out. There were over 20 of them. The reason I mentioned their names was I would like to acknowledge what great people they were. And again, thank him for giving me a chance over 50 years ago. With the profit, I took a hunk of it for a down payment on a duplex on Avenue B in Ukaipa. And the rest I invested and used as working capital in my electric business. That allowed me to take it to the next level. Bottom line, I guess I owe it all to Caltrans. Had the Crosstown Freeway not been built, I never would have had the opportunity to meet so many nice people who were willing to work with a smart aleck quasi-hippie with a ponytail and give him the opportunity to kickstart his life. <laughs>